Hey, what's up? Okay, today I am here. I'm going to do a music review um, for Kendrick Lamar's CD, Good Kid, Mad City. And so, um, if you have been living under a rock, you know Kendrick Lamar is a hip-hop artist from um, Compton, California. And I do not use the term artist loosely. I mean, this guy is a true lyricist, a... Um, you can tell that he really takes the art of hip-hop and the art of lyricism very seriously. And I think a lot of people, um, to, to a lot of people, including myself, he is definitely a breath of fresh air. Okay, so let's get into it. So I know this um, CD, okay, what had happened was, okay, this CD came out back in October of 2012. It is April 2013. I know I am super late. It's okay though, because you know why? I I feel like um, Kendrick Lamar coming into this game, he already had a huge following with the success of his um, album Section 80. However, you know there was there were a lot of people who still did not know about him, and I feel like with his recent performances on um, Saturday Night Live and Jimmy Kimmel Kimmel and a lot of the other late night talk shows. I, I think that his following is even broader and wider now and, and some people, maybe not a lot, but no, I'll say a lot of people are probably just now really um, getting hip to who he is. And so, um, for y'all, this is for y'all, okay? <laughs> Alright, so, um, Good Kid, Mad City. So, once again, I mean, Kendrick Lamar, he is a phenomenal storyteller this album is just not a bunch of songs thrown on a cd it actually tells a story and um everything from you know the album cover to um the skits the skits throughout the the cd is <laughs> there he put his parents um on the album and they're um they're leaving voice re recordings um and they are hilarious. <laughs> I think the skits, it kind of, I, and I haven't, I haven't heard an album where I enjoyed the skits as much as um, Kanye West's Late Registration. Like, the skits are comparable to that. And um, so, I think that you will enjoy the CD for um, the musical content as well as the skits and the story that it tells throughout the CD. Um, so basically, um, the, the story starts off with the prayer, and of, of course, it's a part of the story. And um, basically, what the first song is, Shireen, aka Master Splinter's daughter. So basically, he borrows his mom's van, and he's going to see this girl, Shireen. I don't know who the Shireen character is, but he talks to, about her all throughout the CD. So I'm like, oh, she must have really left a mark on him. Because um, I'd be pretty, you know, flattered if I had a, a, a CD dedicated to myself. But, um, so basically at the beginning he's on a mission to go see this girl named Shireen. And so basically that's how the CD starts off. Um, that's the opening song. And, you know, along the way he runs into some troubles. So, um, track number two, which is I, probably one of the breakout songs on this album one of my personal favorites it is the anthem okay it's the anthem song and that song is bitch don't kill my vibe okay and I think in this song he's he's referring to a lot of the naysayers a lot of the the you know record companies whoever trying to basically limit and halt his creativity however I think you and me as individuals um, we can all relate to somebody killing our vibe i know i run into them type of people on a daily so i love the song bitch don't kill my vibe um uh, track number three which is one another one of my personal favorites um it's backseat freestyle and this track is basically one of like i've heard a lot of other people say um the braggadocious um songs on the album you know the skit before says hey kendrick uh, let's go freestyle. And so I think, you know, in this song, it's almost like he's, you know, 
on on the block with his boys freestyling and you know when you when you on the block with your boys freestyling you you big bad and bold can't nobody top you you the best and so that's kind of like what this type of song is it's a very feel good song i it's ironic as as a female um but i love singing the chorus it's just so funny and i really love this song um the next song is the art of peer pressure and so um, I think that this song right here is a very, I mean, all of the songs are important, but the content of this song is um, very important. And, um, and this song, he was talk, he's talking about how, um, you know, he's doing things that he wouldn't normally do, um, such as drinking, smoking, participating in violent, violent uh, activities. He's doing these things, but that's not the type of person he is. But he's so influenced by his homies and by his community and what's going on around him that he kind of ends up falling into that, that cycle and falling into those types of doing those types of things. And so I think that this is um, a really important song because I think it, it kind of sheds light on why a lot of people, you know, do the things that they do. It's not necessarily because they're bad people, but a lot of times your, your, your surroundings, they influence you and you end up doing things, you know, subconsciously, you end up agreeing to do a lot of things that you wouldn't normally do and that's not a part of your character. Money so, Tree. so Money Trees is a lay, a super laid back song. Um, and the song, in the verses of the song, he's talking about, remember, the, the, the album is kind of, it's, it's kind of talks about um, so he goes to see Shireen and then he meets up with his homeboys and it's talking about a series of events that happen. You know, the young Kendrick Labar, probably in like the 10th grade, him hanging out with his homeboys and, you know, they riding through the city. Um, and, uh, Money Trees kind of talks about this particular night that they had. Um, this, the series of events and activities that took place in, in, uh, during that night. And this features um, J Rock, which is a part of Kendrick's, a part of the crew. Kendrick Lamar is one fourth of the Black Hippie crew, which um, consists of also of J Rock, Ab Soul, and Schoolboy Q. And so um, one of his homeboys uh, from the the crew, J Rock, is on the um, on this song, and I think he really adds a good touch. And just like I said before, um, Kendrick, I mean, he's, he's all about the art, so, um, and he's all about not necessarily putting people who are super popular on his album. It was all about the feeling for him, and I think that um, he was right to put J-Rock on this album because it's kind of like a straight hood album, and we know J-Rock is a straight hood. Oh, Okay, the next song is um, Poetic Justice, and this is one of my personal, um, this is one of, another one of my favorites, and when I first bought this album, honey, Poetic Justice was all I listened to, because of course, it's, it's a song for the ladies, it's the love so song it's, on the um, album. Drake is featured on this song, which is, you know, Drake is the, the rapper that's in touch with his emotions, so... You know, he's rightfully, uh, he was rightfully placed on this song. And, um, uh, however, I am curious to see, like, what Absol would, like, how his verse would have been had he been on this song. Because, you know, he's very poetic as well. And, um, he seems like he's in touch with, with, with his emotions as well. So, I'm just kind of like, Absol, can you do a remix to this? Um, because I'm curious to see. I think he would, um, also do the song justice. Um, so of course, poetic justice is it's a, it's one of my faves um, as well on the album. The next uh, song is "Good Kid" and it features Pharrell. Pharrell doesn't do a verse; he is basically um, he's on the chorus of the song. And um, you know, in the song, he talks about a, a multitude of things. Uh, one of which is getting racially profiled. You know, the cops are looking at him like. He's in a gang, but he's actually not. But because he fits the stereotype of a typical gang member, black, baggy clothes, you know, that happens. Um, next song is Mad City, featuring a veteran in the, the hip-hop game. 
MC8. And um, on this song, Brace Yourself, I Take You On a Trip Down Memory Lane. And so basically, that's what the song is about. He's telling, you know, he's talking about some of his experiences in this song, Growing Up in Compton. And um, in this song, you'll, you know, MAD, the, the album is Good Kid, Mad City, with MAD being an acronym. And so in this song, he uncovers what the acronym MAD stands for. Um, Swimming Pools is like, was the first single that was released from this album and it basically talks about the you know he talks about the negative effects of alcohol which is um, very different from your typical rap song you know he talks about um, how people a lot of you know people that he grew up around maybe his family members or just adults that he knew instead of dealing with their problems they would turn to alcohol instead and and I think as a result um he he saw what alcohol did to people and as a result um I, I I've heard him say in interviews that he doesn't necessarily um partake in, in alcohol as much as you know the typical um artist or you know just basically anybody in their 20s so um it's a it's a pretty cool song his flow is amazing on this song um, next song is Sing About Me, and of course he provides a real smooth flow on this song, and, um, on this song he's speaking, like his first, his verse, first two verses, he's speaking of the, from the perspective of two different people, and on his third verse, he addresses those people, um, as himself, and so, um, it's a pretty interesting song, uh, the next song is real and this is another favorite of mine and um this is a very important song on the album i think because in this song he's talking about you know everything from materialism to street credibility and he talks about how none of that stuff makes you real you know and um yeah, so basically he's talking about the, the activity that is usually associated with being real, you know, in the hood or wherever on the streets, you know, killing people, stealing people, stealing from people, doing this, that, and the other. None of that stuff makes you real, you know, and um, I think this is one of the things that people, he's just speaking from his perspective and what he believes is true to himself. And I think people label Kendrick Lamar as a socially conscious rapper, but I don't necessarily, it doesn't seem like he really views himself as such. I think he talks, speaks more in terms of actions and consequences. You know, his, on his album, he, taught, he speaks on a lot of issues that need to be addressed um, in our you know, African-American community in the hoods and the ghettos of Compton or wherever um but it doesn't that he doesn't come off as do this do that this is bad this is this is not good you know he doesn't come off as preaching I think that's what a lot of people appreciate about him and I think that's why he appeals to a broader audience because um you know things that people typically say keeping it real is is not really keeping it real and I appreciate him for saying that um, and this song ends with a message, a voice recording from his father and his mother. And I really lo love what his mother says at the end of the song. It's, I really love it. Um, and the last, out, the last song on the album features Dr. Dre and it is Compton. And it's basically the Compton anthem, the Compton theme. And um, it's... It's produced by Just Blaze, and, you know, it's just a pretty cool track. It's not necessarily, it kind of ties everything together. It's not necessarily one of my favorite songs on the album, but at the end, at the end of the album actually goes way back to the beginning. So basically, you remember when he's going to see Shireen at the beginning of the album? Well, at the very end of the album, he's telling his mom, Hey, your mom, I'm about to borrow your van. Uh, I'll be back in 15 so that's like the very beginning actually of the album but it's at the end um, and so I think um, that, uh, 
this album is definitely going to be a classic. It's definitely a breath of fresh air. And I think it's it's um it was what very needed. It's very needed. Um come it came at a time where, you know, it's not so much creativity in the hip hop um genre. And I think he is providing that cre creativity and hope hopefully He's opening doors for artists to be true to themselves and he's showing artists that look just you know if, if this is what you're passionate about if this is an art form to you don't change for a few dollars or don't change because the record labels say that you have to like you can do it just remain true to yourself and to what what you believe um, your your artistry your art is and so hopefully um, you know, he he's forcing other artists, other rappers to step their game up. And um, I can't compare it to Section... I feel like Section 80 is so different from this album. I feel like Section 80 was a lot more soulful. And I think I'm going to do a review on that next. And that, <laughs> that album came out years ago, so I'll be way late on that. But if you're a Kendrick Lamar fan, I think that you will enjoy... The review just the same so um thank you for watching and if you have not picked up good kid mad city make sure you go and cop that i promise you will not be disappointed